all day and getting ready to like prep for the holidays and the season and like it's, oh my gosh like our house has been so crazy just insane so I thought like with everything that I went through the last couple of months last like four months I would just kind of like give you guys an update and reach out and kind of tell you like why I haven't been posting all that much and just kind of like shed some light I guess and hope that maybe it'll help someone. So as most of you know I had a baby four months ago and he's wonderful he's totally perfect his name's Adam and if you go kind of through my page you'll see like a bunch of videos of him or like birthing videos and different vlogs and stuff on pregnancy and how my pregnancy was with him and all this stuff. But one thing I did not experience with Adeline and Andrew that I did with Adam was postpartum depression and anxiety. I already have like anxiety pretty bad, um, but I've found ways to cope and kind of get, you know, get through that on a day-to-day -day basis for the most part. Um, when I had Adam, he was premature. So, if, like I said, if you go through and watch the videos, but for those of you who don't know, he was born six weeks early. Really no reason, wasn't a health issue, wasn't anything. I just went into labor and he came six weeks early. I had, like, all of this, you know, pumping and breastfeeding and everything, like, set up and ready to go. Like, I had this whole plan in my head of how I, you know, and obviously we know going in, ladies, that labor and delivery never goes the way you want it to go, right? Of course not. They come when they want to come and he was clearly ready to go. So we got to the hospital, you know, and long story short, he came early and he went up to the NICU. So he was up in the NICU for two full weeks, which is not even anywhere close to what some people have to go through. So honestly, like I, I mean, two weeks is not anything comparison to some. My heart truly goes out to them because I have a whole, like, a whole new respect for NICU babies and, like, the NICU nurses and, oh my gosh, like, it's such a, like, magical place. I'm not even kidding. Like, you walk in and it's just, like, bright colors and comfort and home and they do really a great job of trying to make you feel like, you know, your, your kid's gonna be great. I didn't get to see Adam for the first 24 hours. Like, I didn't see him. I saw him through a plastic box as they wheeled him behind him. That, to me, was like, I mean, I was okay. I was getting through my C-section. I was all right. But that, like, they wheeled him out. I didn't get to see him or hold him or touch him. And it just, like, completely tore me apart. Like, I'm going to probably cry during this video. I'm not even kidding. So, we get to my room. And, you know, they're taking care of me. And I said, you know, when am I going to be able to see my baby? They said, well, when you get up the next morning to take a shower and stuff, we'll, we'll wheel you up there. So all this time, like, I went without seeing him. And I told my husband, I said, you need to go be with him. I don't want him to be alone, you know, because I didn't get to, I can't go. So Levi went up and I FaceTimed Adam and um, talked to him through my phone and got to see videos and, you know, reaching for the fingers and stuff. He was on oxygen and a, and a feeding tube for the first, um, well, the oxygen he was on for only the first eight hours, and then he was on room air the rest of the time that he was in the NICU. He was just really there to learn how to eat. So, after we get past that point and I get up to go see him, you know, I'm, I'm getting up every three hours to pump because I can't breastfeed. And I'm, you know, having to, uh, like at this point, uh, right after surgery, you're just a hot mess. There's like no nice way to put it. You're disgusting. Like you're just, you just are. So over these, like the next two weeks, we spent, I spent healing from a C-section in quite a bit of pain, getting up and down a lot more than my doctor was happy with so that I could go make the 45 minute drive to see my son and make sure that he heard my voice every day and make sure that he got cuddled every day and make sure that he, you know, was not gonna, like, forget me. 
So all this time I'm like trying to pump at home and I got an infection in my incision. So they gave me antibiotics and it completely just dried up my milk. So I couldn't breastfeed, couldn't, you know, bring my baby home. I just had a baby, so my hormones were a nightmare. And I have never in my life felt so bad about myself. Like for those who like know me or see me on a regular basis, like my best friends and whatever, I am a very happy person, very positive. I like to look at things with a good attitude. I don't like to be miserable and negative. And I, I couldn't get the thoughts out of my head about how, like at one point I walked into the room when we brought Adam home. I was so thrilled, but one, at one point I walked into his nursery and looked down at this like beautiful, perfect baby. And I just was like, you're not mine. Like you're not my baby. I don't, I don't feel anything. I just, it was like, I was in this like dark hole that I couldn't get out of. And I truly have never felt so bad about myself. Because, you know, when you have thoughts like that about your child, then you turn into this guilty, awful, like, ball of a mess that you don't, you know, and I, so for eight weeks I was at home, you know, by myself with him, and over time I got better, but I had just the worst thoughts, like I didn't want him. At one point I googled adoption agencies and I was like, I'm going to call because I'm not, I can't even feed him, I can't breastfeed him, I'm not good enough of a mother to take care of this baby, and I can't handle him, and I just, I, I felt like I couldn't, like, be what I needed for him. So I had looked into adoption and all of this stuff. A lot of the stuff, like, I've kept to myself. I mean, I, I haven't really even talked to my husband. Um, I did talk to my doctor about it, though. My anxiety was so high after I had him. Like, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, like, function from day to day. Let alone take care of a baby that, you know, is sick and is coming from the NICU. And it was just the most devastating in my life. I couldn't wrap my mind around having to bring him home and take care of him when I had all these thoughts about how terrible I was and how I was inequipped to handle or take care of him. Despite all of my medical knowledge and my background and my history with babies and working on maternity and like learning everything that I learned there, I just was like, I can't handle this. I can't do it. It was so devastating to me because we had spent so much time and so much money just to be able to have him. And then he was such a surprise at the beginning of the year. And then I have him and I'm just like, I look at him and I don't feel anything. And I told my doctor this in between like tears and just bawling and bawling. And she looked at me and she's like, Catherine, you're an excellent mother. You've done everything you need to do for that baby. And she's like, you're not feeding him breast milk, but you're feeding him. You're not, you're not sleeping well, but you're taking care of him at night. And she just put like every negative thought I had about myself. She turned it around. the worst I'd ever felt about myself or my children. Like, I live and breathe for my kids. And so, going through this whole, like, postpartum depression and feeling like I didn't love my, my son and having, like, that full-on disconnect with him was just the absolute worst thing I'd ever experienced in my life. It was awful. And I wouldn't wish it on anyone. There are so many things that I, I, you know, had wished were different with my labor and wished were different with my birth and being able to bring him to my room and wishing I could have breastfed and wishing I could have done all this stuff. But at the end of the day, like, I still took care of him. I still got through 
the worst part of my life and I still managed to keep him healthy. And once I like accepted that grasp on reality and took that as a positive thing, my whole outlook on him changed. It was just the, it was the hardest thing I'd ever done as a mother is get through postpartum depression. So I took medication and stuff and went to therapy and I got the help I needed and talking, you know, one of my closest friends, um, she had a baby shortly after and she kind of went through the same thing that I did and just talking to her made a world of difference. Like we went out for, you know, a margarita. It was the first one I'd had since he, since I, you know, before I was pregnant and um, just like explaining everything and kind of unloading how I felt and knowing that I wasn't alone and knowing that someone else felt those things too. It made me feel a world of difference. And so I thought I would just come on and like let you guys know that postpartum depression is very real. And it's one of the worst things as a mother that you could ever possibly go through that I have ever experienced myself. And that if you are watching this and you, you know, recently had a baby or are getting ready to have a baby and you have problems or you're suffering with postpartum depression, I just want to, to reach out and let you know that you are, you are not alone. You're not alone, 100% not alone. It is one of the hardest things you will ever go through. And those feelings that you're having are not your feelings. And definitely, I encourage you to go and, and get the help that you need because it is not something that you can handle or fix on your own. It's definitely something that you need help with from people who are trained and know how to handle and are equipped to handle postpartum depression. It's just something that's extremely complicated and uh, definitely go get the help if you need it. Because I definitely did and now I look at my four month old and I am just filled with like the biggest joy of my life. He is so perfect and just so sweet and happy. And he's happy because I'm a good mom. about postpartum depression it's not talked about really there's not a lot like even at the hospital when you get released they tell you you know if you have symptoms of these thoughts or whatever give us a call but they don't really explain what they are or why they happen or that you're totally normal they don't tell you that you know it's normal to have these things and that it does happen to a lot of women and that you're not alone in thinking that you're better off without your child, that you, uh, you know, you're suffering is okay, and, uh, that there's help to help you, so I just wanted to reach out and let you guys know that it's, you're not alone, there's help out there for you, and if you, um, if you want to talk about your experience, or if you're having problems and it would feel better to talk, definitely reach out, I am here all the time, and I at all sharing my experience and talking about it because that's the only way the stigma of you know hush hush on postpartum depression is going to change if we reach out and we talk to each other and we you know let moms know that those feelings definitely are real and hard <laughs> they're very hard to go through so all right well i gotta get into work i love you guys and have a good day bye